Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, my guest is Corey McKinnon. Corey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey guys, I'm uh, born and raised in Sarnia, Ontario, and I've uh, been doing a bunch of investing in Sarnia. I've also, I, I guess I first cut my teeth in London, Ontario, um, and I've been doing a combination of, you know, buy and holds, multifamily uh, income properties, and in the last three years we've been getting into short-term rentals, which has been very, very good, so only renting out by the week or the month. Uh, not Don't quite do daily rentals, but... <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I've been doing for about 15 years and was able to re- retire from corporate um, after my sixth, seventh year investing. So it's been going really well. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, the, I guess, debatable, the biggest struggle in real estate, sort of the, the, the mindset behind the whole thing, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I just find like a lot of people either give up before they get their first deal or, you know, they, uh, they give up before... Um, they could be doing, you know, just taking things to the next level and in any part of the real estate business, right? I mean, real estate is a business and you have to be looking at uh, your own marketing efforts and your negotiation abilities and then your management skills and your team building skills. So a lot of people just kind of, they, uh, they're either too busy majoring in the minor stuff, which doesn't really make any money or they go and actually, you know, take their you know, mindset to the next level, which I think is a very important skill, just like anything else in life. So it's uh, it's very important. You know, I know we were chatting a little bit about this fun, just, you know, everybody has another level they can reach for. And I know I've re- reached for another level the past couple of years, same with yourself. So it's, yeah. uh, you can either be intermediate, which I think even if you're either staying at the intermediate level, you're actually, you know, going backwards because you're not improving your skills or you can just say, Hey, I want to, I want to reach for bigger and better things. Totally agree, and yeah, and I get distracted too, and and, I, and bad things happen, and it crushes what you're doing, and you get way off track. Yeah, don't don't sign up for real estate if you don't want to have to <laughs> solve problems, you know. So, yeah, I th- I think that's one of the biggest things people forget too is that that or they did don't realize is they think it's about buying real estate, and in my opinion, it's solving problems and networking with people and making connections. Yes, and uh, you know, managing human behavior is also a big part of that too. Yep. So. Uh, hey, if we just had to manage a whole bunch of empty, empty properties, I, I hear they do that in Vancouver all the time. But um, it's <laughs> once you once you get a person in there, and you know now you're dealing with the personality, and um, they could start off being great, and then they could all of a sudden start dating somebody that takes them down the wrong path, or you know they lose their job, or have mental health issues, or anything else, right? So you got to be prepared for that. Um, you know, I guess when it comes to mindset, like I, I think it's really important that people have the right conversations with themselves, I guess, throughout the day, right? Um, you can either okay. feed your mind positive material and positive thoughts and ask yourself, you know, solution oriented type questions, or you can have limiting thoughts and scarcity type thoughts and what was me and get caught up in the fear. And um, I think people just, we obviously have the survival mechanism in our brain, which is there to protect us against big, bad things, but um, we don't live around saber tooth tigers anymore. Or anything like that. <laughs> We all have uh, roofs over our heads or they're renting from Glenn or they're renting from Corey. So uh, <laughs> I think it's important that you always have the, uh, like, hey, there is a solution to any problem out there. And if you don't have the solution yourself, then we all have a great network. Or if you don't have a network, get get into a network. I mean, get on social media, yep. go out to up groups. And within, I always tell people, like, within the smallest room of 20 people, there's always going to be the answer to all the questions that you that you have or all the struggles that you have, right? So um, I think a lot of people are maybe even too proud. I don't know what your experience is, Glenn, but just too proud to go out and ask for help. You know, it's um, yep. not in a needy way, not like, you know, solve all my problems every single minute, but like, yep. I think people just want to try to solve it themselves and be the hero as opposed to like, wow, I've struggled for a couple of hours here. I'm just going to go reach out to some people and ask them what they would do in this situation, right? So, yeah, and there's the other side of the coin too where people uh, don't want to share because they think they have some key golden nugget that if anyone else finds out about it they their business will go away or whatever and and that's that's silly because there's millions of houses there's millions of opportunities you, and and pe- if you found some sort of website that can get you some sort of cheap property other people are going to find it too 
There's no yeah. po- there's no point in I'm hiding it. It's a, that's the whole point of the podcast is to share. It's funny. No, it's it's a it's a, such an important point. I was actually just talking to somebody about this last uh, last night. Yeah, last night because I was listening to a great podcast on Friday of last week, and it was um, uh, Lewis Howes was interviewing. Um, uh, famous big uh, big wave surfer. What's his name? Luke uh, Luke Hamill, I believe. Okay. And um, they're just talking about. I'm just going to look it up. Larry Hamilton. Yeah. Okay. And they're talking about how, you know, the same concept, right? You know, this whole secret sauce stuff and not sharing. And you know, back in the day, people used to rise up together. You know, like your um, people were really spread apart, and there wasn't the technology, and there was all kinds of other things we had to overcome, like weather and food shortages and everything else. So people would actually band together and share their secret sauce to actually like survive. You know, we need to do this stuff to actually survive and thrive. And then as populations started to get, you know, much more dense and cities and colonies and stuff like that, then competition came around for entertainment purposes, really. And, uh, you know, fighting and all that sort of stuff. And, and I think that's where we kind of started to go down this path of, you know, people just limited mindset and like, yeah, there's not enough leads out there and I got to keep them all for myself. or I'm not going to tell you how I do my stuff or, I'm a, like, I'm an open book, man. If people call me and they want to know how I do certain things or what products I put in my properties or how I screen tenants, I mean, I'm going to let them know. And I mean, some of the stuff has to be taught, right? I mean, you can't just teach someone everything, you know, and a 30 second, a 30 minute phone call, but uh, if they just need some tools and skills. I mean, that's what we're here for. So, yep. Everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. You always, there's always more to learn too. Like, I don't know if we're going to go into the learning thing, but there's, uh, I listen to Robert Kiyosaki sometimes. I like I've read the books, but I he has a show and stuff too. But he goes to events and still writes full on the whole time, and like he's still the the guru, right? But he uh, he's still learning. He still doesn't have it all figured out because nobody does. And this whole thing it, it can change, right? Markets change, everything can change, and you get you you have to keep being on top of everything. Yeah, and I'm I'm a big believer. You can you can learn something from anybody, and everybody is a an expert of something. So, I mean, I think it's our, our quest, even if we're talking to somebody that, um, you know, lives, lives on the street or something like that. They, they still are very smart at something. We can still learn something from everybody. So it's really important. I know every room I ever go into, I always bring my notebook. I'm always taking notes. Um, because that's, that's really what we are is we're just a combination of all the thoughts and all the experiences and things that we have learned from other people, right? Like people say that they're an individual when I, I remember, I had a grade 10 English teacher <laughs> debate that very heavily and it's, it, it made a lot of sense, right? We basically just pick and choose, you know, what works, what we like and who we want to be and what we're creating. And we just kind of put it all together. So you know, it is tough Get to think if like how many completely original thoughts you've ever had, like it, it's, it, it's pretty hard. Like I, whenever I even think about like uh, when I used to do the solo episodes at the start, and, and really, it's all come from different books and everything else. Like, how many of those are like an original thought? That's something that you just can, no one's else has ever come up with. It's it's pretty rare. <laughs> it's, all been, it's all been thought of millions of times, right? So we're just kind of accessing and pulling it down from other people or other uh, other higher sources, right? So it's it's very true. It's very <clears> true. So, um, yeah. Maybe you can even share a little bit, Glenn. Like you're mentioning that you you want to take your things to the next level as well. So what are some things that made you just want to do more deals um and kind of break out as well <laughs> i guess i never really been asked that question i guess part of it is that i i could do, be doing way more with my time right and my my time is worth more than i get paid for it working like a nine to five job and i you know whenever i work hard and i actually go do something you you look at the what you've done and what you've created and you've made you've like created money like you didn't take it from someone else or ever you you did a renovation you created money it wasn't like a lot of people think you're stealing from somebody else to to get off of you but you you created value right and yep. you're like for the amount of value you created it's it's easy to exceed what you would make in your nine to five job and it, yep. it's it's if you have to find when you're still working your nine to five job the hard part is to find the time to do this but then you I, I was finding myself, it, it was silly when I would go work overtime on the weekend and you're like, why the heck did I do that? If I would have just sat at my desk, found another deal, paid a guy to fix it up, I could have made yeah. way more money 
than what I did sitting here. <laughs> like not even not even close. <laughs> like, and you're like, why did I why did I do this? Why? And I keep I, I do a lot of stuff myself still, and I'm like, why am I doing this? I sit there and analyze deals for the whole night, and that's what I was just talking about on the last show. Is I'm planning on hiring a virtual assistant to do a lot of these mundane tasks that I do over and over that I can systemize and I can, it'll help me build because I can use my time for doing the creative part or analyzing, make breaking stuff down, just filling in spreadsheets, just finding, uh, you know, taking all these deals from wholesalers and putting them into a spreadsheet. So it's easy to digest. Yeah. It, it wastes so much of my time. And I, but I don't think I really answered your question at the start. I was just thinking about that. But <clears throat> you know, I think the first step that people need to be is, first of all, aware. So, you know, yep. everything starts with an awareness. And, um, you know, like you're aware and you're catching yourself. It's like, okay, so, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. Great. I'm going to put that on my list of things to delegate, which is very important. Some people never get to that awareness level. They just, what's the saying, right? If you literally get stuck in a rut, it is because it is hard to get out of that rut. But if you just get one inch out of the rut, you're going to be in a totally different place, you know, a hundred yards down the road. So um, everything starts with an awareness and then what are you going to do about it is the next thing. Right. So I think that's very important and we're all capable of more, especially once you have that experience. Okay. I know how to go and buy a property. Well, the next one's not going to be that much harder and the next one's not going to be that much harder. It's going to be easier and easier. So you can scale it up and systemize it. And I know I'm always tweaking my systems and my paperwork and just making it better. Right. You know, version 1.0 at least get started, but um, it's not that hard to get version 2.0 going as well, and we all get better as we progress, right? So. Yep, and that's one thing too. You kind of are touching on it that as you get more properties, every time it gets easier. Every the whole thing gets easier. The hardest property you're going to buy is probably the first one. You know, you might find some some struggles in closing some things or doing some renovations, but. The hardest property to buy is the first one because you have to use your own money. At least I had to use my own money. <laughs> yeah, and so to, after that, you can you can start, you know, you, you learn to use other ways of doing this, and it just gets easier and easier, and there's equity. and But, it, you know, it's the hardest part is the start, and if you keep pushing, it will get easier. That's very true. It's very true. I know my first property was a sixplex, man, so it was definitely uh... – <laughs> You know, I was a sucker for punishment, I guess, but it was, you know, once, once I figured out how to buy a sixplex back 15 years ago when there wasn't all this knowledge on the internet, I was literally like making phone calls out of the phone book and just reaching out to any realtor or any mortgage broker I could. And if they didn't have the answer, I'd be like, okay, who do you know that might have the answer? Or who's, you know, who's more senior up in your company, right? It was really like being a detective back then. I think those skills are very important to have those fact-finding, searching, detective-type skills because it's nowadays it's just so easy to try to Google stuff. And we, when we can't Google the right answer, <laughs> people don't know what to do. So, you know, I find that people are in their 30s and 40s, you know, used to remember what it was life was life was like before the Internet. And yep. Have to go to the library and get the resource books and, you know, things to figure things out. But No, I think those are invaluable skills. I, I, even a lot of people, I'll tell them to, if, especially if you're buying locally, to – manage your first property at least and to to get your uh get used to and understand what to expect from your property managers in the future and you you, you understand how the business works and you you kind of understand that it does take a long time to paint a room and when contractors yeah. give you a quote for like three or four thousand dollars to paint a main floor and you're like that's crazy but you start thinking about the time you did it <laughs> and yeah. I, I, I don't know <laughs> it's like anything right it's like any business um then you know what that person's going through and um, you know, McDonald's franchisees still have to get behind the, the grill and go to McDonald's University and flip burgers and, and learn everything to what it takes to, to make the franchise run. So um, similar things here with real estate and uh, not saying you have to do it forever, but you do have to kind of get that experience. So then you pay. Now I know who to look for or what to look for when I do hire someone or um, how to train and how to manage them. Right. So, yeah. I was fortunate I never really swung the hammers and stuff all that much, but I was on job sites and I'm learning. I'm, I'm asking my contractors questions and I'm learning from them. And you, you can tell yep. if they know what they're doing or, or if they don't have a clue. So, yep. uh, even yeah. If you, even if you don't talk the talk, you can tell when someone else is not talking the talk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. For uh, sure. So back back to mindset a little bit. Like uh, Part of it's giving up too because my first rental property I bought – 
and I went through a crazy eviction with the landlord tenant board and then the police had to be involved with trying to track the tenant down and they locked my property down for quite a while and I couldn't even re-rent it or anything uh, because wow. they were doing an investigation because that's how bad it went. Anyway, and the whole thing soured me. I sold the property and I didn't buy anything for two years. And you're like, oh, wow. like that's a huge mental uh, block to the whole thing. I just didn't do anything for two years. And then I finally sat there and I went, how bad was it, right? Like, how bad was this whole experience? Because I still made, because the plates, you know, I was in Ontario, so property didn't matter what you bought and appreciated. So I made right. a, quite a bit of money in a couple of years, and I was like, you know what? What's the worst that's going to happen here? Started, yeah. do, started doing it again and about doing it better, learning from what I did, and keep, keep <laughs> try not to make the same mistakes again and try and learn from other people. Because back then, I was doing it all myself, doing the property management and I was doing all the maintenance between properties. I was in there cleaning floors and everything, the whole thing, oh. cleaning out mar cleaning the microwave between people. Oh, the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> but you, you learn and then you don't do it again. <laughs> Hopefully. For sure. No, you're really in the trenches, man. And, um, I mean, I, I've been, you know, working with people, uh, whether it be real estate or, you know, I guess I cut my teeth a long time, like mentoring people, like, gosh, when I was like 21, I was mentoring franchisees in this uh, student painting company. And whenever they have, you know, a doozy like that come up, I just let them know, like, look, um, let's put this into context, right? Is, is that normal what happened? Like, that's that's not an everyday occurrence. Like, you, you pulled out the whammy card right off the bat. And you learned a ton from that. So, you know, what are you going to do differently? What wouldn't you do again? And, um, you know, don't think that, uh, so anybody that's listening out there, if you do, if you did have a bad experience, um, I can't remember where I heard this from, but there's really no such thing as a, a bad tenant. It's just maybe a, a landlord that needs more education or more knowledge or more skill. So go take it upon yourself to get a little bit better and then, you know, shift and, and do things better next time, you know, learn and, and, uh, like you're, everybody here that's going to be on this listening to this is our smart people and it's like just don't make the same mistakes twice you know learn from it what are you going to do to shift and lots of times it's just like a few degrees you know just huh. that, a few decisions i never really thought of it like that it's kind of like you know when people say they have a my dog isn't trained well but it's it's really the way the owner's communicating with the dog right and it you know be right or if you're, if you're not qualified to train dogs i actually had a tenant of mine he uh he was like second or third generation dog trainer yeah uh, one of the few tenants i ever let have a dog in my one of my units and uh, i mean the dog was amazing like you tell the dog to bloody do a backflip and the dog would do a backflip but um <laughs> really followed him by his side never made a peep always went out did his thing outside and um you know I trusted him because he was highly qualified to train that dog. And if, if people aren't, I would recommend, um, you know, going to professional and getting your dog trained because there actually is a way to break a dog. And every, you know, I don't, I'm not a dog person. We never had dogs, but every dog has a different personality and some of them are easier to train. Some of them are harder to train, right? Some of them are passive, some of them are energetic, more aggressive, you know, when you get into Dobermans and all that kind of stuff. So it's, hmm. uh, it's pretty key, man. I, I look back at my father. So my, my father dabbled in real estate a little bit and kind of, Bought at the wrong time, sold at the wrong time, and didn't have great tenants all the time. But it, there just wasn't the resources back then, you know. So that you know, there's podcasts like this, and there's this is my shelf full of you know, most of these are real estate oh, books, yeah. development books. I mean, just get it, get out there and read and educate yourself. And if you're not into reading, then you know, listen, audiobooks, like whatever it takes, right? So yeah, all right. These I reread every year too. So you know, crack it open again. It's what you get from it the second time or third time is important too. You know what? That's true. I, there's a bunch of books I pull out every year and read them. Or I read the read them in paperback once, and now I listen to the audio book just as a, a refresher because I know it was a really good book. I guess when it comes to mindset, I mean, um, you know, I, my biggest advice is just when you want to do something or you want to get something accomplished, you need to go into it with confidence that it's already done. So it's like, and whether you need to visualize that or you need to like write it out and map it all out and actually create it on paper first and then start to, um, you know, create that in your own life because it's going to come true as long as you put in the time and effort and energy into it, um, you know, do what it takes, right? But, you know, when you're not confident and when you're not certain, that's typically when people aren't going to go achieve their results. So there's a very high correlation between results and your, your confidence and the amount of certainty that you go into a certain situation then. And uh, I mean, there's been, hey man, there's been lots of situations, I'm sure with yourself that you go in and you've never done XYZ strategy before. You've never 
done a certain renovation before or you've uh, you know never bought that kind of a building before but like you have the confidence from other contexts in your life previously and you just bring that forward into the new situation and uh, like you said you might not be able to to you know walk the walk but you can always talk the talk right so it's always fake it till you make it and have that yeah. confidence and certainty going into it because people feed off that people will I can I can smell fear from a mile away and if somebody is like not confident or not they haven't practiced what they want to say in their head and they're stumbling and tripping and they just don't seem confident then I'm probably not going to hire them as a contractor or do business with them right so um, you can always work on yourself work on the skills of communication or presentation skills or negotiation or whatever it might be that you're working on in real estate just practice that you know I'm always practicing in the car I'm always rehearsing and you know life is a stage so just make sure that you're fully prepared before you go into any situation right if, if you don't uh, if you don't execute properly it's you could have always prepared and you know, we could have prepared a little bit more even if you're a total newbie at something practice what you think is right you know just and if you don't have the answer it's like hey that's a great question I'm actually gonna go ask one of my mentors the answer so it's never uh, you know don't give a BS answer just say hey that's a great question I'm gonna go get the answer for you yep that's what I'm doing. And you, like, it's not really prehearsed, but you're like, you, there's going to be a lot of the same questions that are asked, especially if you're trying to, you know, do certain things, you know, the same invest, all the different investors are going to ask you the same questions, uh, know the answers, have like kind of, you know, at least know the answers, know kind of how you want to put your, your thing together and it'll come out a lot smoother than you just oh. stumbling through it as you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know, know the personality that you're with. Like, you know, there's there's mainly four different kinds of personalities out there in the world. You have the, uh, you know, really dominant type personalities. They just want short, quick answers and they want the facts. You have the uh, more of the influencer, social type personality, like Oprah Winfrey, and they, they just want to talk and chat and tell you the whole life story. And you got to listen. You got to be a good listener in that situation. Then you're going to have people that are a little bit more routine oriented and a lot more steady. And they're going to want to know the uh, the numbers behind things, and that it's it's good and copacetic for everybody involved. And then you're going to have the really cautious person that you're going to be dealing with too. That you can't just round numbers up, or you know they want the dollars and the cents, and they want to see the proof and the spreadsheet sometimes, and know that there's certainty on on their side, and that you know if they've ever been burned before, they're definitely going to be even harder to deal with, right? So know the personality you're in front of, and then yeah, make sure that you know what you're talking about. It's it's very important to be confident and. And rehearsed and uh, you know the, all the best salespeople all the best negotiators they're all very well practiced and they're canned like they're using the same kind of stuff you know they, they can actually like slow it down make sure it doesn't sound like a script like they're they're telling yeah. or something like that but they've yeah. said the same things you know dozens if not hundreds of times that's why they're so good at it. great advice Corey if people wanted to get a hold of you where would they track you down yeah, I'm on, I'm on social media, so you can find me under my full name, uh, Corey McKinnon. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. I do have my own doma domain where I uh, host blogs and, and testimonials and other uh, you know things that are helpful for investors. So that's just CoreyMcKinnon.com. And I'll be starting up a YouTube channel this year as well. So maybe it'll be something I'll pick your brain a little bit about there, Glenn. But I want to be you know, having a, someone just follow me around, shooting content, because literally every day we're doing stuff with real estate and things that – other people can learn from and instead of being a real apprentice right beside me you can be a virtual apprentice and kind of learn from the videos and the content so uh, i just want to you know thank you for having me on your podcast today it's it's great to meet new people virtually and uh you know i, I think you know it's fantastic what you're doing there glenn so keep well, doing it we've met each other in person though I, I love those sort of more reality sort of shows where you get to go see through the places then go and watching the flipping shows on tv where it's kind of it's not uh, not not I as know, I know <laughs> people and they're like it's half of the stuff is staged you know we have we got to mock up fake disasters and yep i don't know where they get their materials where they get their labor from but it all seems to be like pennies on the dollar it's kind of crazy so yep Yep, no, exactly. Well, thank you for your time again, Corey. I know you're a busy guy. I really appreciate this. Okay, guys, have an awesome night. All right, thanks.